Give me that. It is awesome out here. All right guys, we're over here at the Dunbar place. Uh, so I got my one of my tire waters right here. I just moved uh, Eleanor's bull over and another yearling that, uh, bull that is with him. I just moved them over. Got them in the long stretch over by mom and Kevin's house. There's the big fella right there. This summer, I came up here and put these uh, freestanding panels up to make this more solid because they do this right here. They come up on the fence and uh, were messing with some of the yearlings that I had in here. And that field fence just wasn't strong enough. Uh, I needed something pretty strong because they travel up and down it, want to smell each other and all that. We just got some rain, by the way, and it slopes right here. So it's good that we got the rain. What I've got here is a, a rig of panels to kind of create this triangle where all they can do is drink out of it. It's been a while since I've been over here and showed you guys this, but when I had the yearlings in here, yearlings like to get in the water tank, like full force get in the water. Now that's not a huge one, but it's perfect uh, for just drinking. And that's what we wanted it for. And so uh, I, I basically used these two panels to try to create this V sort of look. And when I did that, it covers up my gate. So I'm gonna have to move all these panels to open this up so what are you doing, Dunbar? So I let them in here, and they're going to start hanging out in this area, in this lot. This is probably one acre lot or so. Uh, kind of slowly get them from the big pasture to the smaller lot into where the silos are. And uh, we'll work them next weekend. These two calves will be separated from their moms, and we'll start the weaning process after we work them this time, this go around. The red dogs, though, are a little bit too young. Yeah, Eleanor's little heifer over here. They're just too young to work and separate from mama. So, a little delayed. We uh, They weren't born till August, so we uh, can't quite wean them yet. What's this guy up to? Hey, Dunbar. Did you get into the cockleburrs again? it! You always find them. All right, guys. Well, I'm back uh, today. Next day, I, uh, I had Brooks with me, and she was uh, getting a little cranky, so we had to we had to go home. But it was perfect because they were here waiting on me last night to open up this gate so they could come in this lot. I went ahead and got it open for them. It's ready. They're uh, in the uh, southwest paddock or pasture right now. So since they're down there and I've got this open and ready to go, I'm gonna go give them a bale of hay to put in here so that they'll uh, they'll keep coming in here and they'll stay in here. So we're about um, nine days out of working them. So this is just uh, you know another step to try to catch them, get them up here, get them used to it, get them coming in this lot. Like, hey, you can come in here, explore around, uh, just get them used to it. And then uh, the day before we'll catch them, hopefully. And uh, that'll be it. So then we get to work them. Um, so I'm gonna go get them a bale of hay. I already put them a protein tub in here yesterday evening. They'll eventually find their way up here. Let's, uh, let's go get a bale of hay.
Hey, give me that. <sighs> All right, so these guys are set and ready to go. Gate is open. Got them a bell of hay, a protein tub, and uh, they'll be set. They're in the far pasture, so they still hadn't made it up here. I figured when they heard the tractor, they would come up here, but they didn't. So no big deal. I'm gonna leave this open for them so they can start coming in and out. That's a little step right there. Then we'll slowly get them from chamber to chamber, lot to lot, whatever you wanna call it. I put a bell of hay out for Eleanor's bull as well. I got another yearling bull in there with him got them in there what will happen is we'll eventually have to run the big herd through there too so that uh, bella hay is in there we'll go from there i'm gonna head back to the ponderosa to get some stuff done over there and uh then we'll be back over here um kevin and i still have some work to do actually on the handling system we're gonna make a couple of minor adjustments nothing major but we're gonna couple of, we're gonna do a couple of things in here and in, in the gauntlet area where it gets a little wild and crazy it can anyways but uh last year our sliding gates were awesome and they worked really well it made things a lot easier but um we still have a couple of minor adjustments to make but kevin and i'll get those knocked out um this weekend so Now it's the ginger. I don't know where Betty is. You know where Betty is? But I know I have no idea. It's something about, I open the door and they just come to you. Or you pull up and they come to you like, like Thor does. But you open the door and then the hens come in. Well, the ginger and Betty. I don't know what it is. I feed you. You have plenty of places to grace. Just don't poop on me. All right, we are back at the Ponderosa. I'm uh, getting the welder kind of cleaned up, get it all ready to go. I'm going to take it over to Mom and Kevin's, uh, where the Dunbar herd is. And Kevin and I are going to do some work over there. That will probably that will probably be on the next video. Ethan and Cole, if you guys watch my fire my prescribed burn video here a couple weeks ago if you haven't go check it out guys i'll leave a link in my description you guys can watch it here at the end of this but we're gonna go look at the post burn area and take a look at it they, they want to see kind of the results uh you know three weeks later since we've got a little bit of rain they want to go see it so i'm gonna meet them right here in the front we're gonna hop in the atv and we're gonna go over and check it out so we're gonna bring you along with this just to see how it looks and I, i've already seen it so i can't wait for you guys to see it um, but we're gonna go check it out That's broom sedge? Broom sedge, yeah. blue stem, yeah. It already came back. Usually not very palatable and they usually won't mess with it, but it's yeah. so tender and awesome though. It is awesome out here. You know, just a little bit of rain, you gotta have a little luck on getting that rain. But within a week or so, actually a couple of days, it, it, we had some moisture. But then an, a week later, after the burn, we got some actual good rain and a little bit of rain look what it does and we're getting some more rain so very excited about this and, and this was one of those things when you burn you take you take some risk uh, with it obviously and as dry as it's been but we're lucky we've been able to get some rain and this is what it does so can't wait i'll come back here again in the spring and i'll show you guys this and it, it should be over a foot two feet tall at some point i hope anyways but uh hopefully keep getting some moisture but this is a good sign get that grass back on there growing some strength back in that root system and get these grasses growing and spreading out and uh holding on to what's 
up here, that topsoil, and strengthen that ground. So great to see this. It's a good sign. Really? Sure. Ah, uh, so awesome having Cole and Ethan a part of this entire project. It's been so fun working with those guys and I so appreciate their help. Uh, they have so much knowledge about fire ecology and I have a slight background in it with uh, part of my wild off ecology degree at Oklahoma State, but uh, it's been a huge benefit to have them and we're gonna do a whole lot more burning. Actually, we talked about it today and I'm excited about it. Here on this front 80 acres here, I'm just on the west side of the barn, but on this front 80 acres here, we're actually gonna do some patch burn grazing. So that will start being organized probably early next year and then late spring, we're gonna do some patch burn grazing and some uh, kind of a, some projects with our herds over here. So thankful though guys, I'm glad they made it over and took a look at it and we'll keep you guys updated on how that all that whole area is going and so far so good. Also, talked about something else that may be interesting to you. We may, if I can check some fences and get a little bit of fence work done here pretty soon, we may let the Big Joe herd out there on the fresh grown grass, winter grasses that are coming in. We may let them go and let them graze some of that down. We'll keep you updated. I'm super pumped about that. We'll see. Okay, so here is where I am. This is our area, this is kind of our alley area where we're looking at where we're gonna work. The Big Joe herd and all my yearlings is right through here. I just put up all these freestanding panels and uh, we didn't do this last year and this is kind of a big space to kind of push them and I had to do it on foot, which is not safe. I'm getting something made for the skid steer. It's gonna be awesome. I think it'll be very effective and a lot safer getting these animals from point A to point B into the squeeze chute where Doc is gonna bring his squeeze chute system. Let's take a look from this above. So this is kind of the idea is they're going to run through, we're gonna push them with the skid steer and they're gonna run through this alley. And it's anywhere from 10 to 12 feet wide where the existing corral uh, was. And then they'll come through here. We've got a cut gate. Doc will have a system here sitting next to the hay bales. And the idea is to run them through there. We've got some gates to kind of cut them and break them. And then they'll be in a holding area and they'll be able to run through and get into uh, Doc's system. Also something kind of fun. Uh, I've been missing this hen. This is, a little, this is not about bison. This is about our chickens, Brooks' little chicken. We've got two little um, black bantams. I've had one missing for a long time. These are very, very athletic little suckers. I'm like, there's no way anything could have caught them. They are very, they're like phantom. They're fast. And uh, anyways, I've had one missing for a while. Yesterday, I found her up here in the rafters inside our barn. They're a lot smaller than the normal size chicken. I found her sitting up in the eight inch sea perlin right above our sliding doors. Today we show up with Marissa and Brooks. They had fallen. 12 feet and there were two of them well actually three of them one of them didn't make it two of them on the ground they were still alive and then uh, we had to move them obviously to get them away and protect them and put a heat lamp around them and then uh, i kept hearing the beep 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 i kept hearing others and so after we got the ones that had fallen out of the nest sorted went up there and <laughs> found two more alive so five total had hatched and only four made it. There's still nine eggs left. So I'm going to actually move the nest. So we put the babies in a container um, big enough for mama to get in. Well, mama didn't go to the nest. She went straight to the babies. And so she's in there with the babies. And I'm afraid she's just going to leave the rest of the nine eggs in the nest abandoned. So I'm going to attempt some. I don't think there's a perfect way of doing it. Who knows? But we're going to try to because she's going to leave those eggs abandoned. I'm going to move the eggs into where she is because she's actually still laying on those chicks. If we can move those eggs for her, we may have a chance of getting her to maybe hatch out nine more. Are they fertile? I don't know. They may not be. Maybe that's why they hadn't hatched yet. But um, I'm going to go ahead and move those nine eggs and see how it goes. At least we can try and see. But we have the first uh, babies ever born at the Ponderosa. Chickens, every baby chicks.
All right, guys, we're out here in the back um, part of this burn unit, as you can see. This is one of those spots I told you I was gonna come back to and show you the steps of it. This is just kind of a, this is a 40 acres right here. Last time I was out here, I showed you the pre-burn, just right after the burn, and then about, this is three weeks later, this is what it looks like, and you can see the difference with all the green. So, and like I said, we may let the bison out here. It's something we're gonna work on and see if we can do. We got a lot of fence work to do, but we may can get them out here and let them graze on some of this stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon.